15th reign, Count Dracula of Transylvania died from blood poisoning. <laughs> January 16th, snow, unusual hanging this AM, the execution of falling from the scaffold and breaking his neck to the delight of the crowd. Many cries of encore and similar witticisms. Father, to horse. Huh? I've just come pell-mell from Stretford. The tradesmen there are in ugly mood. Well, there couldn't be anything else with those faces. What do they want this time? The same thing they wanted last time and the time before. Money. There's no credit to be had, nor civility or service. I was even elbowed into the gutter by a surly shopkeeper. The devil you were! He said he wanted something on account. So I kicked him out the backside and thrust his head into a horse trough. Oh. <laughs> the trouble is there's a lack of confidence, but we won't help matters by panicking, Wadrick. Now, don't just hover around the room like a lady seamstress taken short. Come, sit and have a glass of Madeira. But, Father, the tradesmen have taken out a warrant for your arrest. You are to be in prison for debt. What? Why didn't you say so before? To horse! Is there no way we can repair our fortune? No, you blew it when you let Fanny Fowlaker fall through your fingers. <laughs> then we had them duffing their caps, touching their forelocks, begging us to spit upon them. Then we had expectations. Now I have nothing but the boots I stand up in. No, you haven't, Father. You owe for those two. Oh, curses! <laughs> if we could only try our luck at the tables once more, I'm sure our luck would change. All we need is a steak. Have we nothing left to sell? Nothing that hasn't been sold twice already. One moment. What about grunge? Sell grunge? Why not? He is our last asset, Father. More a liability, really. But how do we sell grunge? The recruiting officer at Stretchford is offering ten guineas for able-bodied men. But grunge is not able-bodied. Short and fat. We could take him round after dark. But would he go? He's a confirmed coward. He may be tempted by the scarlet coat and the brass buttons. Yes, he's always been attracted to bright colours. <laughs> yes, the press gang are offering twenty, but then there's the expense of getting him to the coast. But he needn't be too expensive. He could travel outside the coach or even run behind. <laughs> this is certainly worth considering, Roger. There is a further alternative. Dr. Shepherd of London is offering 50 guineas for a well-preserved body in good condition. Really? How much do you think he'd give us for ground? The same. He gave a hundred for the Stamford Giant. Mind you, he was eight foot and had a head as large as a coal scuttle. But ground is no mean size. That'd certainly be plenty to cut at. Merely fat, I'm afraid, but this is a promising idea. There is one snag. He has to be dead. <laughs> what do you mean, a snag? <laughs> That's not a snag. You don't mean murder, Father. No, certainly not. But there could be an accident. He could go up on the roof to fix a loose tile, lean against the broken balustrade, and with a strong wind blowing, anything might happen. Not to grunge. I know him. He'd cling like a limpet. Besides, he must be in good condition or he'll fetch less. Perhaps we're being greedy. All we need is a stake. I think we should discuss this with grunge. After all, we are talking about his future. <laughs> Ah, grunge, faithful old retainer, saddle me a horse for this is goodbye. Goodbye? I'm a ruined man and I must release you from my service. This means we must consider your future, possibly a new career. Yes, sir. I wonder, have you ever thought about soldiering? The scarlet coat, the bright brass buttons, a girl on each arm, oh, they love a soldier, and the life would suit you. Nothing doing. I'm C3, my constitution wouldn't stand it. <laughs> now you mention it, you don't look well. See how pale he's become, Roderick. Quite ill, in fact. As a parting gift, dear friend, allow me to send you to the seaside. Or upon a cruise. Anything to put some colour into those pallid cheeks. No, thanks. I've heard the press gangs room the ports these days and I don't fancy swabbing decks for five years. In that case, would you consider tiling as a career, Grunge? <laughs> no, You see, I'm worried about you, Grunge. No training, no career. You'll be thrown upon the parish. On the other hand, you could die a rich man worth 50 guineas. You have a mother, have you not, Grunge? No, uh, there's a woman who claims to be my mother. Does she still live under that hedge, Grunge? <laughs> No, it's a hollow tree, actually. Wouldn't you like to buy her a house of her own, with windows and doors? You could die a rich man, Grunge. You could die a gentleman. You've always wanted to die a gentleman, Grunge. Oh, yes. You could have a splendid funeral, eventually, with plumed horses and a marble headstone inscribed, Here lies Nathaniel Grunge, gent... What do I have to do? All you have to do is sell your body for 50 guineas. You mean become a corpse? Where's the future in that? I don't call that a career, being a corpse. No, if you don't mind, I'd soon be poor and breathing them rich and dead. In that case, get up there and check the tiles on the roof. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
Now, if only Master Roderick were back with Miss Fanny, all our problems would be solved. Mm, and if wishes were horses, beggars might ride, Grant. May I speak, sir? No, you may not. Let him speak, Father. Oh, you may speak, Grant. Suppose... Suppose Master Roderick were to <laughs> save the girl from a terrible fate by a deed of daring. Would I have the chance, Grant? I'd go through tempest, fire and flood for that girl. Shh. Continue, Grant. Well, wouldn't she be eternally grateful and her father forever in his death? Yes. Now, let me consider. Suppose Fanny is sitting in her bower alone one afternoon, reading a forbidden novel, when some low fella enters the grounds. He menaces her with his cudgel and makes vile suggestions. She screams, for as the story unfolds, it becomes more terrible and fantastic than the very novel she's reading. Then Roderick appears and beats the living daylight out of the rogue and presents Fanny safely back into the arms of her grateful father. Fantastic indeed, father. I just happen to be passing when this rogue, swinging a cudgel, enters the grounds and attacks Fanny. Sink me, it's a long shot, isn't it? Roger, the cudgel is made of papier-mâché and the rogue is grunge. What? Ah, I see. A strategy. And I get to beat the living daylights out of grunge. Exactly. I like it. Oh, no. He, uh, he's not going to know. He's not going to beat the living daylights out of me. He only appears to beat the living daylights out of you, grunge. Roderick will stay his hand. Oh, will I? Let me guess. <laughs> The week. <laughs> Here I am, sitting in my bower, reading the forbidden novel. Oh, hist, who comes? Who is this brute figure? <laughs> Methinks I am in danger. <laughs> Hello, my pretty. How do you like to come down the bushes, then? Oh, please, sir, <laughs> leave me. Oh, you've been drinking. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Lips that have touched liquor should never touch mine. Come on, just one kiss, you highfalutin baggage. Never, just because I'm a poor, defenceless woman, you abuse me. If I were a man, I would show you what I was made of. Well, show me anyway. Oh, help! Who will save me from this brute? Oh, but wait, who comes? <laughs> It is I, Roderick. Have no fear, gentle Fanny. Now, Violet, unhand this lady before I cut you to pieces. Just because you've got a sword and I haven't, you think you're better than I am? But put down that blade, it'd be a different story. You mincing dressmaker. I don't need a sword to deal with the likes of you, dog. Feel the weight of my glove. Ooh. <laughs> and you feel this, sir. And you take this. And you take that. And, this. and that. And this glove. <laughs> ah, Fanny. My champion. <laughs> Fanny! Oh, Roderick, my hero! Ah. All right, all right, that's enough. Didn't take all day. He lost his temper, Father. He need me in the vital parts. This needs considerable work. Oh, no, I'm not going through that again. And beso besides, Miss Fanny knows me. She'll recognise me. Not when I finish with you, Grunt. No, Grunt is right. I have to think of something else. Well, we'd better be quick about it. Fanny leaves for London today with her aunt, Lady Tartlett. Well, why didn't you say so before? Does it matter? Well, it matters to Grunge. You might have told us before you need him in the vital parts. <laughs> it appears we've been knocking ourselves out for nothing. Right. Uh, wait a minute. How do they travel? They're staying at the inn at Stretchford overnight and catching the early morning coach. Alone? Except for a couple of elderly servants. Good. Women travelling alone are more vulnerable. Now, suppose Grunge and I enter the inn, insult the ladies, then Roderick appears in the nick of time and puts us to flight. But everyone will know you, Father. <laughs> They'll know us, but they won't know One-Eyed Will and the Hook, at least only by reputation. One-Eyed Will and the Hook? The notorious tavern brawlers and bullies. Uh, the same we read about their exploits daily. Half the county goes in fear of them. They say many crimes are laid at their door, but none dare inform. They abuse women and terrify the populace they're vile. Precisely. And with the aid of an eye patch and a wide-brimmed hat, I shall be one-eyed Will, and Grunge will be the Hook. Right! Ah, why do they call him the Hook? Well, because... <laughs> he only has one hand, Grunge. In place of the other, there is this... There is this hook. <laughs> hook? Oh, no, I'm not having my hand off. Not for any Grunge, faithful old friend. <laughs> Nothing doing. It may not be necessary. It's been nice knowing you. I'm leaving. Put it down! Sorry, sir. Just closing. No, you're not, landlord. You've been granted an extension. By whose orders? One-eyed Will and the Oak. One-eyed Will. And the Oak. And the Oak. One-eyed Will and the Oak. 
Now, servers, damn you, before I cut your liver out and show it to you. Yes, brandy by thunder, or I'll shake hands with your windpipe. Oh, yes, sir, straight away, Over sir. Over there, Rook, table by the fire. But... <laughs> I told you to be careful. That's the third time. We spent 20 minutes stuck in the coach. Oh. I haven't got used to it yet. Couldn't we put a cork on the end? <laughs> Certainly not. Do you think the hook has a cork on the end? Well, do you want everyone to think you're a pansy, Grant? Oh. <laughs> why, why does it have to be the right hand? Took me two hours to button me trousers. <laughs> because the hook's hook is on the right hand, that's why. You'll be all right. As long as you don't start picking your nose. <laughs> and stop grumbling. It's not easy for me either. I walked into two low beams and a lantern already. <laughs> I suppose the ladies are in a private dining room. When do we go up? Not until Roderick tips us the wink. In the meanwhile, I suppose we'd better do a little bit of roistering and swagger. Ah. Ah. <laughs> what are you staring at? No, uh... Nothing, sir. Nothing? Do you call that nothing? I lost my high in the service of His Majesty, rot him. And you call that nothing? He's very bitter. Of course I'm bitter. I haven't had a penny compensation these last 20 years. Uh, I, I meant that I, I wasn't staring, sir. Oh, yes, you were. Have you never seen a man with a hook before? Uh, well, no, sir. Oh, well, what do you think of it? <laughs> it's very nice, sir. Sheffield Steel. <laughs> It suits you, sir. <laughs> yes. But do you think I'll ever be able to play the spinet again? Oh, I'm sure you will, sir. With practice. Yeah. Trouble is, gets caught between the cracks when I'm playing the twiddly bits. <laughs> Mozart's out of the question. <laughs> well, I'm sure one day, sir, you'll be able to play as well as any man. <laughs> what do you mean? With one hand? Are you mocking me? He's very bitter. Oh, of course I'm bitter. They soon forget. We sacrificed our vital organs for those who sleep in silken sheets while we trudge the roads. We ate the gentry. That's why we burned their ricks and, and ravished their daughters. We spit on them. Don't get carried away. <laughs> now, tell me, landlord, are there any ladies of quality here tonight? Uh, why, sir? We feel like a spot of ravishing. <laughs> we, 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 like their, we like to make their haughty cheeks grow pale and their silks and satins shake with fear. We want to tear them. <laughs> with them, landlord. Uh, no, there are none here, sir. It's a quiet night tonight. A growing quieter. Why have they stopped singing? Uh, Don't they like our company? Oh, I'm sure it's not that, sir. Well, tell them to give us a song, Dan, and sing! <laughs> gentlemen. Do you have his acquaintance? No. Well, only slightly. He seems to have put you quite out of countenance. Out of countenance? I am transported. My colour rises, my bosom heaves. I shall betray myself. What was that, Fanny? Nothing. I was referring to the young gentleman. He seems a very pretty fellow. Pretty fellow indeed. He is my sun, my moon, my love, my life, and Yet I dare not speak his name. Fanny. <laughs> if you don't stop doing that, they'll take you away in a green cart. <laughs> Pray tell me who he is. He is no one, and of no concern to me. He comes. Your servant, ma'am. Do I know you, sir? I'm afraid I don't have that good fortune, ma'am. But I've taken the liberty of approaching you, for there are rumours that brawlers and bullies have entered the tavern. And since they have no respect for gentlewomen, my sword is at your service. You are too kind, sir, but we are ladies of quality. Our breeding and civility will be the best defence, but still, I thank you. Your name, sir? My name? It is an old and honourable one, and though much maligned by evil tongues, it still stands like a beacon to men of honour. Hmm. And what is the name? 
it is a name that has attracted scandal and censure, but it is a name I am proud to bear. And the name? Uh, some say it is beneath contempt, but it is not without honour in the county. But what is it? It is haggard. Haggard? Ah! Yes, it does sometimes have that effect. Away, you varlet! My brother has sworn to kill you if you approach my niece again. But he fears for our safety, Art. Safety? No woman is safe with him. No lock secure, no balcony high enough. He's been up more walls than Virginia Creeper. <laughs> Go, sir! Oh, Roderick! Disquiet yourself not, Fanny. I just hope your aunt will remember her words when danger threatens. In the meantime, I forgive her this slight in your name. Your servant! <laughs> If we don't bother them, they won't bother us. Evening, gents. Mind if we sit here? We seem to have more in common with you than with the rest of them. Take a breath, shipmates. Have some grog. Peggy! Members of the Brotherhood. I thought so. I said, I said they'd be members of the Brotherhood. Well, I'm one I'd will. And this here's the hook. Patch haggard and... Okay, grunge. <laughs> Drink up, me artist. Uh, thank you. So, uh, where'd you lose your Uh Off a of van, caught in a broadside on the old Barracuda. Ah, uh, one of Flint's men, eh? Uh, they were, they were hard with Flint's men. And you, matey? The, the same broadside that took his eye took off my hand. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I said, where's my hand? He said, don't expect me to look for it. <laughs> and we laughed. And you, matey? Of Barbados, against the Don. The only words we was took was hung in chains, lashed, branded, but we still spat on them. Oh, that's nothing. When I was took, I was lashed, keel old, main braced and barnacled. What? <laughs> that was nothing. I was last thumb screwed, put in an iron boot, and stretched on the rack for three days. The rack? Aye. When I come out, I was six inches taller, but I still laughed in their faces. What about me? I was hanged. <laughs> hanged? Then how come you still alive, me old bucko? Well, it came on a rain and they left before the end. <laughs> I was cut down by a friendly native. <laughs> The hook believes you. In fact, I think he thinks your mendicant's trying to rouse up pity. Does he, my thunder? Well, what do you, where, where do you think that is? He didn't get that by biting his nails. <laughs> he was all just to put my mind at rest. <laughs> Can us have a little look behind that patch? Oh, well, I... I wouldn't want to catch cold in that. <laughs> now. <coughs> oh, very good. Very lifelike. Oh, how he twinkles, Hook. Waterford Crystal. <laughs> well, I thought I had the best. I swear it moved. It's on a swivel. <laughs> Faith, I've never seen better. Let me look at it. <gasps> what? Well, take it out. Oh, you want to examine it? Well, I, I don't think that's a very good idea. Oh, come on now, don't be shy. <laughs> look. <laughs> Here's mine. Now let's see your. Uh, excuse me. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> he hasn't got his land legs yet. <laughs> what are you doing in here? What? I mean, you look marvelous, absolutely marvelous, no doubt about it. You really are revolting, the pair of you, but it's no good sitting here. Damn your eyes! Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> and the voice, I particularly like the voice, but it's wasted in here. The women are in the dining room. Are they? Yes. So when's the ravishing going to start? Not good all night. Now get on with it. <laughs> Hello, my beauties. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Well, I'd have thought that were obvious. We come for a spot of ravishing. Landlord, send for the constable. Oh, you can send, but he won't come. Because I'm one-eyed Will, and this gentleman, drooling in anticipation, is the hook. Be 
gone, sirs. We are ladies of quality, not dockside wenches. Oh, we appreciate that. We are not uncivilized. Though first we shall take a glass of wine, then we shall step a measure, and then we'll start the ravishing. <laughs> Will no one save us? What are you knaves doing here? Wait a minute, this were your idea. Take care, you rogue. You're talking to a gentleman, and this lady is of my acquaintance. Leave at once, or it'll be the worst for you. And that goes for your friend with a surgical appliance. <laughs> Tell him if he doesn't cease his unwelcome attention, I'll hang him by it from the highest beam like a leg of pork. You do that to the hook. Aye, if the mood takes me. And as for you, be careful I don't close the other eye. Oh, brave words, but we be two against one. Ha! A fig for the odds. Oh, Roderick. Take care, sir. Fear not, ladies. I'm not easily aroused, but when I see beauty in the hands of beasts, I have the strength of ten. Oh. You call me a beast? Worse than a beast, a cur who will not remove his hat in the presence of a lady. Remove it. Never! Then if you will not remove it, wear it like a gentleman. Allow me to advise you that it is a little awry. It should be more rakish as befits the fashion. Permit me. You're doing splendidly. <laughs> That'll teach you to quarrel with your betters. <laughs> well done, Bruns, but we've got to make this look good. <laughs> I found that quite stimulating. Roderick, my hero. to you. Oh, Roderick, my hero, my Lysander, my Hercules. The art was nothing. <laughs> Will you carry her to our chamber, sir? Of course. <laughs> my brother shall hear of this brave deed. <laughs> <laughs> A clever ruse, sir. A brilliant stratagem, John. Grab the dogs. We'll ride you unrestricted on a pole. <laughs> <laughs> then again, perhaps not. Ha <laughs> ha